Could the Kansas City Chiefs sign J.K. Dobbins? Well, they hosted him in a visit today, so let's talk about it here on the Chief Support by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Chase Andrews, and J.K. is one that I honestly really, really like, and I'm happy to talk about him because I mentioned him now over a month ago that I would really like to see him in a Chiefs uniform, and now we officially have a visit. Adam Schefter had the report earlier this morning saying, Free agent running back J.K. Dobbins is currently in Kansas City on a visit with the Chiefs per his agency, LA Sports and Entertainment. The former Ravens starting back is expected to have a home very soon. Now, given that he's visiting with Chiefs, and guess what? He's expected to have a home very soon. Kind of sounds like a signing is imminent. So make sure you hit that subscribe button because it's exactly like last night. Carson went signed. We had a video out. Same situation here. As soon as J.K. Dobbins signs, hopefully it's with the Chiefs, we will have a video out. If you're not subscribed, you are not alive because we're getting a ton of Chiefs content out for you, and this is the best place to find all your Kansas City Chiefs news in one stop shop. Let's talk about J.K. Dobbins in terms of statistical because he had some interesting years. Let's go back to his rookie year, though, where he played the most amount of games and he was relatively injury-free. 134 carries, 805 yards, 6 yards on the average, 9 touchdowns. Everybody thought this kid was special coming out of Ohio State, and I still think people still have that thought. But then tore his ACL in 2021 in the preseason, did not play. Still had some lingering issues in 2022, and then obviously this year, immediately tore his Achilles in the first game against the Houston Texans, where he only had 8 carries for 22 yards before having that injury. And now, guess what? He's a free agent, and people are worrisome of those injuries. But if there's a team that could sign him that could be a little less worried about it, it would be the Chiefs, because Isaiah Pacheco is clearly the bell cow back at RB number one. Behind him, I honestly don't know. Michael P. Ryan and Eric Prince are not exactly an RB2, RB3 that I want to see. Deontay Ingram, Hassan Hull are also on the roster. I expect those two to be practice squad guys, along with Louis Reed Zamet. I feel as though he could be a practice squad guy as well. I, I, I you know struggle to find him finding a roster spot at least in the first year now the reason that they don't have anybody is because they have two running back free agents this year you talk about Clyde Edwards Alaire you talk about Jarek McKinnon both these guys are not only a little bit on the different type of running backs than the Chiefs maybe are looking at but the free agents they're not signed and I think the thing that you have to look at with both these guys is Clyde Edwards Alaire is young yes but the guy has not performed out of LSU he was first round draft pick as Never lived up to that. Jerick McKinnon, on the other hand, he's 31 years old. And running backs are somewhat of an interesting concept, especially when you're getting around that 30-year-old mark. So I don't know if the Chiefs want to sign back either of those guys. I always said that I would like at least one of them back. But I also love J.K. Dobbins. I think he fits this offense very, very well, especially when you think about Isaiah Pacheco. He brings a lot of knit, grit, slamming his foot into the ground as hard as humanly possible. And he's strong. J.K. Dobbins is a bit more of a speed back, which has obviously caused those injuries all on the right leg. Now, that being said, injuries, I think, are the only thing that you're worrying about with Dobbins. He's a very clear runner. He has a very clear style. And he really meshes well with what the Chiefs want to do in terms of RB2. I think he is, in my mind, a better Clyde Edwards-Alaire, just more injury prone. So I asked the question, do you want the Chiefs to sign J.K. Dobbins, or is this somebody that you feel as though... The Chiefs don't need to get. If you'd like to sign him, then you type Y for yes. If you would say no, let's not get him too many injuries for me. No reason to go out there and sign this guy. Well, then type in for no. I'll give you a quick second to answer that question. Injury history. Let's talk about it because I know I've mentioned it, but I haven't exactly put the two and two together, basically. Everybody always talks about J.K. Dobbins and says how dynamic of a back he is. However, I think the thing that everybody kind of sits here and talks about is his injuries from year to year have just been not great. Now, if we go back to his entire career here, back in 2016 in high school, he had a broken fibula in a senior year in the first game of the season. Fun fact, that game was then rained out, so it didn't even freaking matter. Played one drive. Uh, still, obviously, played at Ohio State. Was relatively injury-free injury -free throughout his time there. And then in 2021, he absolutely destroyed his right leg, touring his ACL, LCL, and meniscus, uh, missing the entire 2021 season. And then in 2020, 2023, excuse me, he tore his Achilles tendon, 
That was obviously this past year, and that was in the first game. I just don't really know at this point in terms of the injuries and all that things, but I will say this. These were all season ending, and he has visited with other teams. The Chargers hosted him uh, about a week or so, a little bit, maybe a little bit longer at this point. Obviously, it seems as though the final two guys are in the AF, a AFC West. You have the Chiefs, you have the Chargers. Who will assign him? Well, now it's just a waiting game. Given that we have the thought from Adam Schefter saying he'll have a home soon, I have to think that a signing will come within this week. With the NFL draft being almost three, or just about three weeks away now, teams are starting to have to make moves in terms of what they want to do in free agency and what they want to do before the NFL draft. All right, coming up on today's show, we're going to give you more info on Carson Wentz and the Chiefs signing him, along with a couple things that I like about him. Plus, I know you're looking for it. A Rasheed Rice update will give you the latest on everything going on with his car crash situation and the latest in that. Before that, though, we got an amazing word from our sponsor, Game Time, a legendary, legendary sports app. They've got ticketing for a lot of different things. They have comedy, music, theater, and they know that you shouldn't have to worry about buying tickets to your next big event. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Now, their app, super user-friendly. You can go check out the Royals right now. And with the code CHATSPORTS, you're going to get $20 off your first purchase. That's enough for a couple tickets this week as they're taking on the White Sox. And, hey, Kauffman Stadium, not too many years left. Obviously, the new stadium is exciting. It's great. But Kauffman is a beauty of a stadium with a fountain in center field. So go check it out. Again, you can use code chat sports for $20 off, but I recommend this app with all my heart. I use it so, so many times. In fact, I used it just last week to go to a baseball game because their app is so super user-friendly, and it's really, really easy. They got last-minute ticket deals, flash deals, and zone deals. It's super easy to find and buy our tickets for every kind of venue, area, not just sports. Plus, you get views from all the seats in the venue, and again, lowest price guarantee, even cancellation protection for any and all things. So once again, go check it out. You can go download the Game Time app and use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Once again, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CHATSPORTS. CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Lowest, lowest price, guaranteed. Let's talk about the Carson Wentz signing. It's Jordan Schultz. Had the report saying he is a backup, as we all expected, on a one-year deal. Now, I first want to bring up his career stats because I think people don't realize how much Carson Wentz has played, first of all, and how well he played in a majority of his time. Over 22,000 yards in less than 100 career games, 62.7 completion percentage, which is, in my mind, very, very good. I think if you're over 60, 61, you're in a pretty good tier. 153 touchdowns to 67 interceptions. And he is now the new backup to Patrick Mahomes. And as somebody that I honestly really like, did not play last year, but interestingly enough, Charles Goldman with this, Carson Wentz regular season record, 47-45-1. and one. Chad Haney, Matt Moore, and Blaine Gabbert, the other backups that the Chiefs have had in the past couple of years, their combined regular season record, 48-87. and 87. Yikes. Now you have a guy with starter-level experience and somebody that has, I mean, I know we're not looking for this in a backup quarterback, but high upside. I mean, if Patrick Mahomes gets hurt, I'm not going to throw in the towel with Carson Wentz. I mean, we've seen what he is capable of doing, especially back in 2019 when he was, I think, the premier, premier starter in the league. I mean, people forget before he had that injury, he was leading the Eagles on a historic run. Obviously, Nick Foles finished that out with a Super Bowl win over Tom Brady's New England Patriots, but... 4,000 yards, 27 touchdowns, just seven interceptions. He was great on his feet as well. I mean, we saw his prowess coming out of North Dakota State, and he really performed well in his years with the Philadelphia Eagles. Unfortunately, though, his injury in this year really hurt him because 2020 was not great for him. But I will still say, Wits was a legitimate starter. People who want to say that he was not, I don't get it. I mean, he literally was the guy who led the Eagles to a playoff berth. Yes, did he finish it? Now, but at the same time, he was the one who got them there. And I truly do believe that Carson Wentz is going to fit this system. He's going to be the very good backup. And I think that overall, he is a good signing. 
And so with that being said, I want you to grade the Carson Wentz signing A, B, C, D, or F. What do you think? You like it, A? You hate it, F? Somewhere in the middle, B, C, D? Well, let me know down in the comment section. Grade the signing of Carson Wentz. Let's talk last four seasons because that's kind of where everything started to go downhill. So after that 2019 year, his Eagles season after that in 2020, not the greatest. 2,600 yards, 16 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. Kind of revitalized his career in my mind with the Colts in, seven, in, in 2021, playing all 17 games, over 3,500 yards, 27 touchdowns, and 7 interceptions. Very similar stat line in terms of touchdowns and interceptions to his amazing year in 2019. Then played with the Commanders. It just never worked out there. Again, the interceptions became a problem. And then last year, he spent a majority of the year on his couch before signing with the Los Angeles Rams and becoming Matt Stafford's backup at the very back end of the season. Did play in two games, had 163 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. This is a great backup. I know that that's not the role that he has played in his career until last year, and it was only for a short time as the back half of the season. But he's somebody with starter-level experience. He's somebody who I think I could rely on in a lot of different situations. And I think there was a good point brought up on Twitter. I apologize, I forget who said it, but... They don't like to sneak with Patrick Mahomes. That's not something they want to do because, well, you don't want to hurt your star franchise quarterback. Sneaks can cause a lot of different issues, especially with more of a bigger guy or you know, kind of the Patrick Mahomes body type. Well, Carson Wentz could easily do that. And so say you're in a fourth and one situation or uh, uh, whatever, obviously you want to have the ball in the hands of Patrick Mahomes, but what's to say you don't bring on Carson Wentz? You have somewhat of a trick play. You have him sneak it. I mean, there's a bunch of different opportunities with this, and I feel like, again, we'll have to wait and see how they use him, but I truly do feel like there's a potential for Carson Wentz to actually get some playing time in some meaningful slots in terms of short yardage situations just because he's a bigger body, and uh, they're not afraid to maybe put it on the line a little bit more than their star quarterback, Patrick Mahomes. Let's talk about Rasheed Rice, because we do have somewhat of an update on him, although not too much, and obviously, as this situation unfolds, we will continue to get updates every single time we hear it right here. I uh, want to kind of give you a baseline of situation if you missed it yesterday. Rasheed Rice is wanted by Dallas police after being suspected of causing a six-vehicle accident. Rice was believed to be street racing in his Corvette against someone in a Lamborghini. Both the Corvette and Lamborghini fled the scene where multiple people were injured. Two were sent to the hospital. Rice played for SMU before being selected by the Chiefs in the second round of the 2023 draft. So that's kind of the basis of the situation. Uh, he is now complying with the Dallas Validi and I released a statement yesterday, but Adam Schefter had this this morning saying that the NFL spokesperson uh, said this morning that the league is monitoring the situation of Chiefs wide receiver Rasheed Rice. And so with that, obviously there's potential for a bunch of different things. But for now, we can't speculate. We just have to wait. Obviously, I know that stinks because we want information now. We're human. We want to know what's going to happen, what's going on. Will he play? Is he going to have a suspension? Right now, we don't know. But I think given the details that we do have pretty clear information on, a suspension is definitely possible if it is confirmed that he was the driver and that he was at the scene and that he did leave. Because you know, a hit and run is not exactly the greatest thing. It's a misdemeanor if nobody was injured. Uh, potentially a felony if somebody was uh, injured in a serious way. So obviously something we will keep track of here. Uh, so make sure you're subscribed for that because we'll have the latest news and updates as they come in, along with hopefully a little bit more on the positive side, a J.K. Dobbins signing video within the next week. As I'm hoping, I really want him. I think he would be a great fit. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, guys. We're going to be live later today at 3 p.m. Central Time. So if you made it to the end of this video, why not join us for live as well? We're going to be chopping it up, me and Sam talking it. So make sure you're joining us right there. But for now, that's all we got for you this morning. We'll see you later today. Chiefs Kingdom, peace out.